Egypt's football fanatics are known as the Ultras. Their story is filled with passion, revolution, politics and persecution. Once the voice of Egyptian football, the Ultras stepped out of their stance and onto the streets and have since been branded as terrorists and locked up behind bars. So who are they? And how did they change Egypt's politics? And how did they become outlaws? We have such a mentality uh, that uh, differs us from uh, the ordinary fans. Um, a mentality that can, that can only be found uh, among the ultras. Uh, a mentality that um, is stronger than uh, any repression, uh, stadium bans, uh, prison sentences, uh, or even, uh, or even uh, death. Egypt loves football. The two biggest and most celebrated teams are Al Ahli and Zamalek. Al Ahli and Zamalek have tens of millions of supporters in Egypt, Africa, and across the Arab world. It was the young fans of Ahli and Zamalek that set up the first Ultras groups in Egypt in 2007. The Ultras White Knights and the Ultras Ahlawi. We are the official Zamalek fan group. We were founded in 2007 as the first Ultras group in Egypt. We were founded by three guys, Sayyid, Buffon, and Tabla. We have no majority amongst us, we are little Egypt. We are the poor, the rich, the educated, and the illiterate. We represent every group across the country. We are a non-political group. Uh, we care more about our club, um, our passion, and uh, our beliefs. No difference between um, Muslim and the Christian, uh, or black or white. Um, uh, we stand for what we believe uh, all together, no, no matter uh, the circumstances. Despite having no political goals, the Ultras erupted onto Egypt's political scene in 2011. In the 25th January Revolution, the cry for bread, freedom and social justice was heard louder than ever. The Ultras had been very vocal about their opposition to the government and were well acquainted with confronting security forces. White Knights uh, was a key part of, uh, of uh, the confrontations uh, with police, uh, marches uh, and sit-ins uh, sit uh, with our emotional uh, chants, our songs. Our participation uh, on the front lines of, uh, of clashes with, uh, with the security forces uh, on the Friday of Rage and uh, in the battle of uh, Muhammad Mahmoud, it's uh, a particular remember. Uh, a number of uh, ultras white knights uh, were killed during the revolution and uh, the protests, uh, others uh, are present till today. It was uh, a national uh, movement, uh, not, not a political uh, one. Uh, so we are not uh, involved in politics. Uh, we just love football uh, very much and love uh, our country even much more. I am a citizen like everyone else. Like everyone else in the world, I want my country to be the best. If someone is from the nicest country in the world, he wants it to be better. No one wants to be a revolutionary forever. If life was good, trust me, I would stop doing anything that would challenge the state authority. And so, the Ultras were at the center of the people power that brought down Egypt's dictator, Hosni Mubarak. But their role in the uprising was not forgotten making them a threat for those still in power. And so, after 2011, the lives of these young heroes would turn upside down. On February 1st, 2012, exactly a year after the Hosni Mubarak speech, Egypt's worst football disaster occurred. During a game between Al-Ahli and Al-Masri, 
Known as the Port Said Massacre, it is considered one of the most fatal incidents in football history. 74 people were killed and more than 500 were injured after thousands of spectators stormed the stadium and violently attacked Al Ahli fans using knives, swords, clubs, stones, bottles and explosive fireworks as weapons. Despite the presence of police and army officers in the stadium, the violence took over. One of the Ultras Ahlawi members spoke to us anonymously and said, I was there and we were set up. I saw the police closing the gates and letting our brothers die. The people are not stupid. We know that the security apparatus set us up. They wanted us to learn our lesson and never challenge them again. On the same day a year ago, Mubarak had promised that there will be chaos if he goes. And this is not a coincidence. The Poseid massacre, we still don't really know what exactly happened uh, or who did it, but it did look like it was something that was planned. Uh, it's not clear who planned it or why they planned it. That's all speculation. But what we do know is there were thugs from outside the Port Said, that there were people who uh, came to the stadium in the second half who weren't actually watching the game. Uh, and then they went up to the uh, Ahli fans uh, at the end of the game. And as we know, over 70 people uh, were killed in that, in that incident. Egypt's court intervened and sentenced 10 people to death and 22 others to 10-year prison sentences. <laughs> but it wasn't long before another disaster ensued. Three years later, in February 2015, thousands of Ultras White Knights showed up to attend a game between Zamalek and Indy. A few hours later, 28 football fans died in a stampede after a confrontation with the police at the gates of the 30th June Stadium. The police said they used tear gas as fans tried to storm the stadium and blamed the unruly behavior of the Ultras for yet another football disaster. But the Ultras blamed Zamalek President Murtada Mansour and security forces for what happened. That day, um, Murtada is uh, the one who blamed uh, by declaring um, the, the match against it gets free for fans uh, and handed out most of the uh, match tickets uh, to the club's uh, members. Uh, on the other hand, uh, the police prepared the steel cage uh, for the fans, which basically was uh, the first of its kind uh, in stadiums all over the world, um, in a narrow uh, corridor uh, to force uh, the biggest uh, number of, uh, of fans to overcrowd and uh, and then so I surprised them with uh, tear gas um, and cartouche uh, bullets um, from uh, near distance, uh, which uh, finally led to, to the kill of uh, 20 of uh, Zamalek fans. After the incident, Murtada Mansour filed a lawsuit against the Ultras. The courts claimed that Ultras White Knights had collaborated with the banned Muslim Brotherhood to incite violence. And so, the Ultras were branded a terrorist organization and the state cracked down hard on them, arresting more than 3,000 fans nationwide and imprisoning all the leaders of the Ultras groups. It used to be just one club that was with the regime. It's now two of them. Ahli and Zamalek board members are all with the regime and Murtada Mansour, that son of a After Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi took power in 2014, he called for dialogue with the Ultras. تعالوا يا شباب اختار عشر منكم من اللي هم اللي انتوا بتطمنوا ليهم يخشوا ويشوفوا الموضوع ده بتفاصيله وهم يبعروا عليكم الموضوع But the ultras aren't buying it He's tricking us so the state looks good and we look like the guilty ones But how are you inviting us when you are still arresting my brothers? So will Egypt's ultras stay in hiding forever? Or will they return to their stance? We hope uh, the situation uh, changes, but uh, one thing for sure, we will never surrender. My 
I've asked two Egyptian hooligans, don't give up from your struggle to get back your right to come on stadium and support your teams. The police, just you need strong will, and I believe in you, you're gonna make it.